that in a minute. Let's see. Oh, I, oh. That's good to know. Science. Okay, so it looks like the stream, my, the behind the table stuff is now streaming to YouTube. If you guys need a link to that, let me know. It is warning me that there's a very bad connection. And I'm gonna do a little intro for YouTube, so. Hey guys, so this is the com commission stream for At Home Con. And if you guys wanna hang out and see the table front and join in the chat, you can go to ustream.tv slash channels slash Becca hyphen S hyphen commissions and come hang out with us there. So this is the stream for just the tabletop. We tried doing that on Ustream and it crashed my phone. And hopefully, uh, hopefully my phone can handle it now. We'll see, we'll find out. So I'm gonna move that aside for now. And that is the inside of my pencil case. Cat cam. <laughs> Y'all don't want that. It would just be cats pooping all the time. So what's neat about doing this at home is that I can watercolor, I can do marker stuff, which is all stuff that people ask me to do at cons and I can't because um, I didn't bring it or there's just not enough time or there's not enough space or I'm just like too scattered not able to focus enough to be able to actually do it at the show which would be markers because um, I'm usually stopping and starting a whole lot let's see oh uh, there's the food day pen sorry about this there's some other pens that are not food day pens and I'll get this off the table. Oh yeah, and Leanna told me to make sure I drink some water. So Bowie, man the table. Bow the table, grade the table. Grade the table for me, Bo. Watch it, watch that table. Table the table. I guess you guys could actually hear me. I could actually talk to y'all while I do this. It's, man, it's kind of fun and it's also kind of weird. I can see why um, other people enjoy streaming a lot. hangout stream would be really cool. I know, right? Oh no, I hope by sick you just mean he ate something gross and it came back up and not like actual sick, like you need to go to the vet because that is rough. Please no exploding cat butts, that's not fun. Not like, I mean, if you guys wanted to set up tables, we could do that too. Um, but I'm not saying to any level of this elaborateness, just sort of like whatever people are comfortable with doing would be really cool. But I like, I recognize that like that's not feasible for everybody um, and that it might not be fun for everyone. So I wouldn't suggest it for everyone, but for people who would like to or are comfortable, I just, think it would be really fun. Like anytime I have a group of friends, I'm like, we should do, and I start thinking, I never suggest it, but I always think we should do a hangout stream where we're all drawing and hanging out and chatting about stuff. And uh, Western Shoujo artists used to do a Google hangout like that. And this, so 
I got a, I don't, how do I put this? Um, so, usually, I like doing portrait commissions. This is a portrait commission. This is from MTAC. These three dudes asked if I would do, or commission me to do a digital uh, portrait of them. And I don't normally get asked by dudes to do their portrait, but I have really, I'm really enjoying this commission and I wish I got more like this. Like, I would like to do D&D uh, &D characters as well for people. Um, and I do get them occasionally, but because my style isn't really like fantasy artist, I don't think people really uh, connect the two. I know. Oh yeah, 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 um, okay, well, like, whenever you guys, um, whenever you guys think it would be reasonable to do it, we can do it, um, I'm gonna be out of town a lot in October, so y'all, I can't participate, I can watch, but I probably can't participate in October. But, um, yeah, that would be cool. And whenever y'all are ready to do it, we can do it. And it can just start out as, like, something super casual. Like, everyone's just working on whatever they're working on. Or we can try to do something more organized. But, yeah, I'm down. And um, whatever I have learned from this, I'll be happy to share it. And I, hmm. Hey, Joseph, what do you mean by the camera angle is weird? Because I am not looking at it from the same way you guys are looking at it. I am, uh, so it's like in a horizontal orientation, but is it upside down? Um, I, I can rotate my camera, but I can't change to like a portrait mode because it, my phone is heavy and the thing I'm using on it is cheap and it can't withstand the weight of my phone. So if I were to do this again in this, capacity I would need to switch uh easel what's the word tripods if we did the google hangout thing um I actually if we did it through google um I don't actually know uh, if we can stream with anything other than uh, like webcams so that is a consideration but we can talk about it we can chat with people who do it more regularly and see what they think um, I could ask the dudes who do lean into art how they handle it holiday season oh okay um, maybe so um, I'm going to be in Louisiana for two weeks around Christmas, but if we did it like the first two weeks of December, I would be home. And that's when people, I, I find that like the closer you get to Christmas, the less people are willing to think about buying art as a present. So I think because they know it won't come in time. Um, so yeah, like a holiday, a holiday Christmas special, a holiday special for Ink Drop Cafe. Um, that could be really fun and really cute. And uh, if I did this setup, I would uh, jack my table out to look like a cafe table because, yeah, that could be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to do that right now. Um, and I am at the top of the frame. It would look better if I left it in the I thought I had it on the horizontal ro rotation. Um, burp, 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 burp. I don't know if I can. I can switch the camera. Oh, oh. No, uh, Kelly, you can totally share this. It's it's cool. Thank you so much for asking, by the way. Um, I am not super sure about fixing the view. 
I apologize about that. More like, um, I could probably, I should maybe bring it up on YouTube. Um, and I'll probably do that in a few minutes and fix the orientation. So now I technically have two streams going on. So, um, to condense for my own sanity, uh, YouTube folks, hey guys, thank you guys so much for hanging out. This is the art slash commission side of the at home con stream. It seems like the YouTube app is working a lot better than the Ustream app was working on my phone. So, um, that is why it's on YouTube and not just a separate channel on Ustream. But if you guys, uh, uh, Joseph will probably answer your questions. I can't say for sure because he's in another room and I can't see him and he didn't volunteer for this. So I'm volunteering him, which he might not appreciate. Uh, <laughs> but I appreciate him doing it. It's super nice of him. Um, and the main chat is over on Ustream at ustream.tv slash channels slash Becca hyphen S <laughs> hyphen commissions. And I can, uh, someone, maybe Joseph, ah, can drop a link for you guys. Um, and you're welcome to chat in either place. But the only chat I have up due to my Surface Pro getting like progressively slower is the chat on Ustream. So uh, I may not see chat questions on YouTube. And I apologize for that. This is 100% a new thing for me. It's a learning opportunity. So we'll see. And uh, I'm sure the more I do this, the more proficient I'll get at it. I need to maybe watch some Twitch streams where people are actively taking commissions to see how they handle it. Cause like a notification noise to let me know to check would be great. And maybe that's something I can set up. Maybe it is not something I can set up. I have a couple of friends who uh, stream really regularly. It's part of their, a bigger part of their income than it is for mine. So um, I will ask them. And I will share what I learn if anybody is interested unless they ask me not to share and then I will not sh share it. Oh. oh, you know, Picardo might be. Oh, no, we can just do it for us. Like, however y'all want to do um, a multi-person stream. And I've never streamed on Picardo, so that could be, like, the way to go. I just don't know. Uh, Kloja, it sounds like you are much more familiar with it. So I will leave that to your discretion. However y'all want to do it. And addressing something that was said way earlier, it is, it is um, to allow people who dislike you to make your decisions for you, whether or not they're actually making those decisions. Yeah, that, that is not, not a good mindset to be in. And it is certainly not a good reason to do or to not do things. And I was, I was kind of surprised that I, I even cared about that.
I mean, when I was younger, I certainly cared about that, but I have spent many years doing stuff people have told me not to do. Not, you know what I mean, like, um, doing things that people are like, oh, that's going to fail. You know, I spent a lot of time just doing those things. Um, unfortunately, sometimes they're right about that, and um, that's going way, way back to the Tokyo Terror... Oh, if I knew what the word mean, meant, I would, I have a feeling it means what if girls, Tokyo what if girls, but I'd have to double check. But going back to the manga we were discussing earlier, uh, sometimes you don't realize what you're doing until you see someone else doing it. And then you're you're kind of horrified by what you've become. Sometimes, sometimes not. I want to fix his nose. Hmm. Maybe maybe it's okay. You know what? I'll save it to the end, and if I'm still like, oh, I want to fix his nose, then I'll fix it. And if not, then it's good enough. So with this, I'm not going to do it on camera because I don't have Wirecast set up to stream. Oh, that was not done right. To stream the digital part of it. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Sorry, I just checked the chat, and uh, I'm gonna hold off on the multi-stream because I agree that it is probably a discussion, like a, a big group discussion, and I agree that um, people are gonna have different experiences and different things to bring to the table. So uh, since I don't have anything more to bring in that regard, I'm just not gonna say anything about it. But I'm still very interested. Do not take my lack of discussion as lack of interest. Um, words but Joseph in the Ustream chat pointed out that a lot of people stream their digital commissions so they don't have to look away from the camera uh, and that is that is true uh, a lot of people who will live stream their art at this point in time are doing digital stuff I think there's probably some traditional people and I'm just not aware of them Which is kind of a funny thing to say, considering I used to be really on top of like knowing everybody's business. But so much has changed in the past five years and a lot of the people who I thought, um, a lot of the artists who I thought were gonna really um, blow up by now, that didn't happen. So, um, and a lot of people who I was coming up with have kind of moved on to different things. So uh, where I'm going with that is a lot of my information is dated and I probably need to make a concerted effort. Like there was a period of time where um, when I was uh, still an in at SCAD, um, we were doing a lot of research on streaming. This is before it had really taken off to the levels that it did. And um, Joseph like made a document where he like compared to the three most popular streaming sites for the time. So Justin TV was one of them. Ustream was one of them. Uh, Twitch might have been on there as well. He can he can tell you better than I can. And Oh, uh, they warn, uh, hey YouTubers, so uh, YouTube warned me when I started this recording that uh, the recording quality might be poor. Um, I think I'm, actually I bet I'm still connected to a different wireless source. Let me see if I can fix this without it interrupting the stream. So why I need to go, hmm, I don't want to click finish. Uh, let me see if I can.
There we go. I think it disconnected. Um, words. Uh, anyway, uh, so we used to have information on where people were streaming, what they were streaming. Um, then for a while, Twitch was like, we don't want any art on it. We don't want anything that isn't like basically video games. So uh, Twitch just sort of fell off my radar. I mean, sometimes we'd watch people play games on Twitch, but I didn't think of it as like a resource. And now like all the artists I know who regularly stream, stream on Twitch Creative and are like, have you tried it? And it's kind of like, uh, you know, I feel like for Twitch, I missed the boat because my content isn't uh, gaming heavy and uh, I don't really do a lot of video game fan art, and yeah, I could do a lot more video game fan art, but like, a lot of these people have already established themselves on Twitch as that's what they do, and I don't, I say this as a comic artist who entered comics in like the mid-2000s, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't like entering fields that have already been saturated, unless I have something really new to bring to the table. And as you guys know, new doesn't always do super well because it's untested. And then we were talking about that whole six month thing and then I throw in my hat and I'm like, I'm done, I'm finished, this is not working. So like all of that really combines to like, I probably am not gonna switch over to Twitch. but that I recognize that Twitch is probably an excellent place if you do like video games, if you do play a lot of video games, um, to sort of find an audience who's interested in watching you make that kind of art. And I could just be talking out my booty. I, you know, I haven't like done any number crunching on this. This is like a sample size of 10 people. Sorry, trying to troubleshoot. Someone is having problems connecting to it from Discord. Um, and I don't know if, I don't know what it is. It could be a lot of things and I don't know. I'm sorry. And it sounds like, because I can hear, I can hear, and I don't think it's picking up for you guys, which I am happy about. Um, I can hear that the stream's a little bit behind, which is, which is fine. So what I was thinking about doing is we can do a couple of different things. And this is um, addressed, well, I guess it's addressed both to those of you watching on YouTube and those of you watching on Ustream. Um, cause you guys have totally different views. Um, I can work on Kabocha's commission next, which doesn't require my phone camera, or I can give you guys a tabletop tour by dismounting the camcorder. So that would be the Ustream people and show you guys the table and flip through things and talk about things. Or I can stop the recording on my phone because I have reference that I need on it. Now maybe I could send that reference over to my computer so that I might only have to stop the recording for a little while and work on a watercolor commission. <sighs> Shoot, I wish there was like an easy one place vote I could do. Um, I am also happy to hear that Niji is feeling, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was right. I'm glad Niji is feeling better by the way. Um, 
he is an old, I mean, you got, you stream people know, YouTube people don't know. He's an older male cat, and um, he and my cat, Remy, the one who lives in Louisiana, have the same, um, the same thing is wrong with them. They both have uh, hypothyroid issues, so when Kabocha is like, you know, Niji sick, I'm like, oh no! It still sucks when cats are sick. And it's going, uh, it's getting overcast outside. So if you guys need me to do something about the lighting, let me know. Uh, it seems like Joseph is moderating both chats, I hope. It also seems like my Ustream thing has timed out. So I'm gonna refresh that page and see if it will be any better. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. Ah ha ha! I'm so behind on the chat because it timed out. So let me check some things. Yeah, it seems like Joseph is moderating. So thank you so much for doing that because this would be me in the dark without a mod. So I really appreciate that. And uh, going going back to the, um, you know what, I'll just talk about that in Ink Drop later. All right, so I'm gonna make it Joseph's responsibility because he totally wanted to spend his day moderating my streams. Do you guys want a tabletop tour on Ustream, which would mean the YouTube stream has audio, but the video doesn't change. Do you guys want me to work on Sam's commission, start the sketch? Um, or do you guys want me to pause the Ustream stream, pull up the reference I need for that, put it on my computer, and then restart that, and then work on something that's gonna be a watercolor commission? Uh, just say which one you want in the, the uh, Respective chat and uh, Joseph, let me know who won. And I can do that. And I should probably, I can't do it on YouTube easily, but I should probably post links to my commission information and how, if anyone is interested in a commission, how you guys can order one and uh, yes all right so this is not finished because oh i should show you guys too this this is what i was working on on youtube uh it's finished for now um it's inked rather so the next step for this piece is to scan it and then we're gonna work i'm gonna work on it digitally but i'm not gonna work on that during the stream because I would have to do a lot of switching and finagling. Pause the stream and just leave the chat live. Oh, can I? I don't know that I can do it. Hey, Ring Love. Um, burp, 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 burp. I really wish Bo would just sit on my chair for me. So, um, what I think I'm gonna do, if it's not horrifically boring for you guys, is give you guys time to vote or say which you want. And I'm gonna go wash my hands because I got ink on my hands. And, dude, do you wanna be on camera? You wanna be on camera, right? I know, he's sleepy. <sighs> my assistants are useless.
Yeah. Uh, Joseph, you can tell him, yeah. I can take a 10. Um, that's going to be a one person in graphite. And ask them to email it to me at becca.hilburn at gmail.com. And the PayPal is the same information. So when I have, I guess, I guess you can hear me actually. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I can't always tell if my phone is still running. Um, email me, PayPal me. Uh, and when I get both, I can start on the commission. And thank you very much. Or can I pause? Oh, are, are you in the YouTube chat? <laughs> oh man. Being grossy down camera. Real con life, y'all. Actually, real con life would be on Friday at most shows, not at MTAC. MTAC's always busy. Um, one or two people kind of grazing by the table, making the rounds, kind of pre deciding what they want. Uh, one very excited person about their, one person very excited about commissioning me. Um, so I'm usually working on that one commission. Um, and then just kind of like a lot of not much until like three. And then things start to pick up. People get out of school. People get out of classes. People are starting to take off early from work. I'll eat more later. I just don't feel like chowing down right now on camera. Y'all wanted the table tour. I'm gonna have some water and I'll do that. So I have an old iPhone laying around. I think in the future I'll set my iPhone up as my secondary cam and have it on the wireless. And that way I can use my phone to monitor commissions and stuff. So that way I can check my email. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of unplugging. Take me a minute. Unfortunately, I have a pretty, my brother gave me his camera stand a while back. And it's pretty cool in that it has a quick dismount feature. And I'm gonna switch the audio Hopefully you can hear me. It's just like one of Joseph's uh, interviews. All right, so these are some of the original pieces of art that I have. Most of them, I'm actually, you know, on the floor. Oh, it's really cool. My camera tells me how many people are in the chat. That is cool. Um, most of these are watercolor. I think a few of them are marker, and I can say which ones are marker. Um, and not all of them are fan art either. So have the Ink Drop Cafe logo, uh, flyer in there. And if there's one you're interested in, let me know in chat. And with the fan art, for the most part, I only do stuff that I'm actually a fan of. So I do all the Pokemon I think are really cute. Uh, I do a lot of Zelda stuff, surprisingly. Actually, I'm gonna sit. Yelling is not fun for my knees. Um, actually, surprisingly, uh, Deku Link, everyone really likes him, but he hasn't gone home yet. But I usually can't keep Zelda stuff in stock. And then Danganronpa, and I don't know, I've had this Sonic for a while. I used to really enjoy the Sonic games when I was a kid. Um, but it was, of course, like at a cousin's house because I wasn't allowed to have consoles. More Danganronpa, 
Uh, I had a really cool Lupin, but I actually gave it to a con staffer who was cosplaying as Lupin because he was very helpful for, to me and also just like cool the whole weekend. So I uh, gave it to him and then Jigglypuff, who used to be my favorite. And that is almost it. I actually have up there some more, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And then a lot of this stuff, I like how I stand and sit and stand and sit. A lot of this stuff is actually stuff from like YouTube. Um, so this was recorded and is on YouTube and it is like spray, like crafters spray effect, whatever. And it's got, let me see if I can, it's got like gold shimmer, but it's, uh, spray, gouache, and watercolor. Watercolor. These are, I believe they are, um, like the, uh, conflict, uh, shoot, radiant liquid watercolors. The, not the PH Martins, maybe the PH Martins. I'm so sorry. Uh, Kuratake. So this is the Zig Queen Color Real Brush, and I do have a tutorial for this. And then these are like little edagame cards. So um, edagame watercolor paper reacts really differently than Western watercolor papers. And it took a lot of experimentation for me to figure that out. And then this was done to test the Cottonwood Arts laminated watercolor sheet. And this is just a quick study on Fabriano. And this was to mess around with almost entirely with Derwent water intense watercolor pencils. And then this was, gee, maybe the April art snatch from last year. And these, like this, these are all um, like fountain pen ink tests. So that's another fountain pen ink test with watercolor on top. Copic marker. Copic and watercolor. This was, or hang on a second, let me fix that. This is a hot press watercolor paper and this is fluid, um, their cellulose based hot press watercolor paper. And I just don't really care for it, but um, I haven't tried their cotton rag one yet. And this was fluid 100 watercolor paper, Strathmore watercolor paper with, um, like gold ink flecked onto it. Shenzhen watercolor paper, and it's just a watercolor study. Um, I just happen to really like Drew Medell's. Her is Happy Clean Color Real Brush. And um, if there's like a specific question about a specific piece and I'm not covering it here, you can ask in the chat and I'll get to it in a little bit. Let me fix this. This goes on the front. This is the field test for the, the Echo Line watercolor markers. Shenzhen watercolor paper again. Um, what was I testing with this? I think I was um, testing the 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 the, um, the platinum desk pen in like super fine, which my friend Bye Bye Starlight uses for some of her gorgeous art. And you guys know how it is when like an artist you respect, you find out they use a certain material and you're like, I have to use that. I will be the best artist. This was a watercolor study done as part of the improvement hell challenge, which I need to get back to. And a lot, like uh, I've probably said before, a lot of this is Kara stuff. So this is the Ink Drop Cafe original. So this is the promotional piece I did for Ink Drop Cafe. And it's actually pretty big. It's like 14, no. 11 by 14, probably. Last year's Christmas card. Here we're getting into some of the older stuff. So a lot of Kara stuff, a lot of promotional materials that will probably be used in volume two. And then my little cowgirls, who I really like. Um, they were done to represent the different times of the day. And I'm missing morning. Or she's somewhere. I bet, I bet she's in a frame. I have a lot of art in frames that I didn't put up for today for various reasons. And I'm working on matting more of my pieces so that I can fit in better with like the craft art fair crowd. Bien! Okay, next up we have 
my portfolio of seven inch pair of pages. This is where these went. I, <laughs> all right, so um, a slight detour. I usually put my mini prints, or I like to put my mini prints in like photo sleeves, and then I will use magnets to attach them to my grid wall. And I didn't with this because space is a little bit limited. So I'm going to, ha, yes, successfully toss them off camera. Then I have a fairly substantial, considering it's Kara. Oh, oh no. She got like grossified. I can fix this. I wonder how that happened. Sorry. I'm gonna toss her off camera, fix her later. So some of these pages are from chapter three which has gone live now at both 7inchcare.com and 7inchcare.tumblr.com. So you should start seeing some of these pages pop up. And some are from chapter four. So this is obviously the cover for chapter four. But in chapter three, spoilers! So if you don't like spoilers, turn off your sound. In, and I guess look away from the video for like five minutes. Um, so in chapter three, Kara decides she's gonna go explore the outside, the outside world, the backyard. Um, before her family moves away to the deep woods and so because it's a backyard it's not very big in reality and this cat here pancake notices the movement in the grass you see his tail twitching He's like oh and of course he brings her back to his owner Naomi who is super concerned and also kind of like, what? And Naomi's at that age where um, she's like right at the cusp of, um, okay, so like, and I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this and apparently 14 was sort of like the age where you still kind of wanted to believe in like fairies and elves. You knew they weren't real, but you really wanted that like last vestige of magic. I think that's why Harry Potter was so appealing And then these are chapter four pages. So more super cutie pancake. And these pretty much live in this portfolio. I bring this to shows and I have it out. And um, people can flip through it and ask me questions. And it's actually a lot easier to make book sales with this on the table. These are um, chapter five. This is, let me see, do I have the cover? Yeah, I have the cover for chapter five in there. Um, it makes it easier for people to engage me about my work with this like out and in their faces. So I think I've made a lot more sales thanks to having this portfolio out. And I apologize to those of you on YouTube, if you want to see what I'm actually showing everybody, head on over to ustream.tv slash channels slash s hyphen commissions. And Joseph, if you could drop a link in for people, that would be cool. And then I don't know, I just really like the sequence. I thought that was well painted, especially that like, ooh, tasty face. And then flashback, because I'm indulgent. And for the flashbacks, I did all saturated colors, so there's no, um, so usually I would use contrasting or shadow colors um, in addition to that actual local color to shade but for the flashbacks I wanted sort of like this technicolor memory like you know how things are always better or better or worse they're always more vibrant and vivid in your memories so that's what I was going for and this is a spoilers this is um, Naomi uh, I mean uh, Maldina sorry Kara's mom is a teenager and that's Rowan her father And that would be Kara's grandmother. And then 
chapter six pages, which um, I do post the progress on Instagram, or I did when I was working on them. So that's like way, way back. This is one of my favorite pages. I always include this in my uh, portfolios. And then more cat indulgence, because what is the point of having a tiny people comic if you don't have 100% cat? So trying to up my cat levels. And then making flower crowns. And that's what I have in the Kara portfolio. And I probably spent more time going over that with you guys than I usually do at a con, but you know. <laughs> and then I have copies of Kara out. And then I have one gray bow cat. Hey, buddy. Hey, dude. So I have original art and uh, well, that, that's like a duh. Okay, most of these are watercolor. I think all of these are watercolor, except for this, which says, let's put the show in Shoujo, which is a hand-loaded room sign. I was doing a bunch of them for a while and um, they just never really took off at cons. They might just be at a bad price point. So I don't have so many of them. And we have copies of Eat It Up, which is not $25, but does have a post-it note to protect young eyes because the cover, yeah, it's actually not too salacious. It's just that since I do a lot of kid lit shows, I can't have this on the table. And let me see if I can find the story I wrote in here. So this was interesting because um, it was the first time I'd been paired with an artist. Usually I, I do the art and the writing, but Ladies Night likes to break up. Um, it like, it, it tries to, to teach you different roles. Um, are you further back in here? I bet you are. Yep, this is it. So, Ify did the art for this. And it is about a trip to Tokyo, it's autobio actually. So it's about Heidi and I going to a yakitori place and not understanding any of the language. Well, very little of the language, not enough of the language. And <laughs> asking instead for the most delicious thing on the menu because we didn't want to admit that we couldn't read Japanese. And he brings us his favorite thing, which is like heart and liver. And Heidi is just like, no, I absolutely cannot eat that. And so I have to eat both of our plates. And it was delicious, but I thought I was gonna die of a heart attack because it is heart and liver, which is super rich. And then we've got 31 Days Under the Waves, which is last year's Inktober. And it is just loads and loads and loads of mermaids. And I have coloring sheets that correspond with that. And all of these post-it notes denote their that this illustration is also in the coloring pack. And I think I even have um, a downloadable one on my gum road. I need to check that, um, make sure it's up there and send it to my backers if they're interested. I think I did, but I think I probably should send it again because I have a couple backers who are really enjoy coloring. So I need to make that accessible. And then this is, um, this so, so I sent a pitch off to graphics when they were doing their open submissions. I never heard back, which means I did not make it, but I really enjoyed it. And it was for an auto bio comic called Cicada Summer. And the pitch was that half of the stories are about a 13 year old girl growing up in rural Louisiana. The other half of the stories are about a 13 year old boy growing up about 40 miles away. I don't want to say a direction because I always get it wrong. And just sort of like their uniquely Louisiana experiences. So Pickin' and Peelin', which is this comic here, is all about a family crawfish boil, which takes place in Picayune, Mississippi, which is like right on the border of Louisiana and Mississippi. So it is super, super Louisiana, Southern. Whole family eats crawfish on the grass. And I have a huge family, so I had to do like 20 character designs for like a 10 page comic. <laughs> I thought I'd lost my mind. I was like, why did I go with the crawfish boil again? 
And then I haven't done sketchbooks yet for this year. And I don't know if I'm going to or not. Um, oh, that's where the Japan sketch. This is actually pretty old. Um, people still like it though, so I still offer it. That was done the same time the story about Yakitori literally happened. Actually happened. There we go. Okay, so we have my two sketchbooks from last year, Let Sleeping Cats Lie or They'll Drink Your Watercolor Water. And I think the reason they never sold well is the titles are not as good as, so uh, my, mm, what's it called? My sketchbook for the year before was called uh, Artistically Challenged. And it wasn't, it was about doing a bunch of artist challenges, but people were offended by the title, so they were intrigued, so they'd pick it up. There's like a clickbaity title, I guess. I'm gonna flip through it. Wrong ways, we're gonna read it manga style. Or just not. Yeah. So it's like studies and gesture stuff. So, you know, the actual sketchbook. And then this is all, because I do a lot of um, color studies and color work. So this is a lot of the watercolor illustrations that I did. And marker and other things. This does not sell well at all. Um, I asked six for it because it's actually really a really hefty little book considering what it is. And I might need to get some additional light because the sun changed. So here are my wooden charms and I don't have a sign for them. Yes, I do. Do do. There we go. And six each or two for 10. And any of the ones that have a loop at the top can be sold as a keychain or as a necklace. And this is the mermaid, acorn, succulent, strawberries, and they have strawberry flowers as well. Very cute. Daruma, and I have an unpainted Daruma. The painted charms are $10 as a base. Then we have one of the two Karas, and Kara charms come free if you order a copy of 7-inch Kara, which I need to fix. There we go, which is $15 each or $20 with an in-book sketch. We have Lucky Bouquet, so there's a shamrock in there. Cutie Witch, who's also available as a pin. Shoujo Cyclops. Coffee Maid, which is a coffee mermaid, and she's a pin. And I have versions of her where the whipped cream has been colored in. I always forget this dinosaur's name. I'm so sorry, but it's like the bonehead. You know what I mean. Uh, and it's pin back. Llamas. And I have, I think I have another succulent version. And with, which has three succulents in it. So that would be the succulent garden. I can grab those later on. Sloth. And then this is what the little mermaid looks like colored. Or one of the colored ones that I have for her. And then we have these. So this is the sort of stuff, um, a lot of, them, of what I'm gonna show you guys from this point on is stuff that I don't sell online because um, every one of them is different and they, it would just be a really, it would be a pain to list and then have to maintain that. And I don't charge enough for them to make that worth it. So I don't normally sell these online. But if you guys seek one that you want, you can place your order by letting me know in the comments. And then um, you can PayPal me the amount and uh, make sure you include your mailing address in the PayPal, like the comments. I mean, it usually does include that, but make sure that way I cannot forget and I will ship it off to you. So the way you would do that is just describe it to me. You know, like, I want the white cute button with the black cute text, that sort of thing. And I usually sell these for like three or four dollars, so three dollars especially since I don't know, they take up a lot of space and I don't know how many shows I want to offer them at. And then on a similar note, and I need to touch my lighting and I'll, I'll turn the rest of the lighting on soon. 
Um, I have these really cute little barrettes of a similar nature. And I guess so three for any of this stuff would be would be good. And then these things back here are rings. I actually have a lot more rings. So if anybody's interested in looking at more rings, let me know. I'm actually gonna turn off these lights because they are directly in my eyes right now, but I'll turn them on in a bit. And then I have, I have so many of these bows. So these bows are $6 each. And it would honestly be easier for me if you just described what you were looking for and I show you some options that might fit. And that was the whole point of the dual camera was to show commissions and to show uh, the sort of stuff to like be able to run it under the camera. I'll figure that out before the next at home con. And then these big ones, and I only have like four of these, are $10 each. So with these, it would be helpful if you were like, I want the Red Mermaid one, or I'll put this right here for a second. I want the super glittery one with the lace and the burlap, or let me fix this. I want the floral one that you can't really show me very well because there's all this other stuff on top of it. on and then I also have lots of really cute little coin purses these are art scale coin purses and my friend Wes did the um, did the space backgrounds for me and I paid I paid him for them and I'm so these are used the backgrounds were designed for these and are used with permission and it was a commissioned piece and I need to link you guys to Wes's Etsy shop because he makes really cute stuff. And more watercolor originals. And then Cyclops bags and Gem in the Holograms bags. And then more watercolor originals and a giant flower in the background. And then my commission book. And if you guys want to see a flip through of my commission book, you can find a detailed flip through over at my YouTube channel. And if Joseph would pop a link in for me, that would be super duper helpful. So for a lot of these things that require flipping, I, uh, <laughs> I did a YouTube video for them, like individual YouTube videos, because I, I know that not every, you know, not everybody's gonna see this portion of the stream. And then I have so many mini prints. So for, for this at home con, I was thinking about doing like um, like a, a numerical system, just number them. So print number 11, uh, and I did not because when I explained it to Joseph, it seemed like it was confusing. So um, you can see a flip through of these also. And if it's a fandom thing, you can just say you want the fandom thing because I don't usually have multiples of any um, particular character. But if it's a Kara thing, you might need to describe that for me because I have way many Kara things. Or not. And then I also have stickers and I promised that I would go through the stickers on the stream because I did not go through the stickers on the channel. And they are not in any particular order. And there's some fan art stuff in here, but not really a whole lot. Um, it's more like botanical stuff. Um, or like general cutesy stuff. Sorry if I blinded you. Um, I also did some stone studies this year. So I threw in the stones to see how they would do um, because I have like a lot of succulents as well. So I was thinking it could be like a DIY uh, rock garden on your laptop because a lot of people buy stickers to go on their laptops. And my stickers are $1.50 each or two for $2. Um, and since we're doing this online and I'm mailing it, I will probably just pop your stickers into um, a white mailing envelope 
and send it on its way like that. And you can place, if, you, if you're more comfortable with emailing me, you can place your order via email or you can order here in the chat and just PayPal me the money. And if you're really, really uncomfortable with um, either of those options, I do have an online shop and what I can do is I can make a special listing for some of these things and you can pay with your credit card or uh, hmm, I think it's credit card, PayPal, maybe Bitcoins for the shop. So um, if you prefer to pay that way, we can do that. But I'm going to do that after the stream is over. So send me an email with what you want and I'll make a listing for you. And I usually just have these in a tray like this and uh, people enjoy, you know, swirling through it. And I think that is my table tour. So you guys have seen everything I have out. This is a slightly abbreviated version of my con table. I usually have like the banner across the top and I usually have like side wings and just more stuff up on the side wings. But I wanted to, oh, and I usually can't have the print rack at anime cons because those of you guys who know anime cons, you don't have any like around you space and you can't put stuff in the walkway. So um, it is a rare show where I get to have the print rack out. And then since you guys like cats, try to angle it away from the litter box. This is Bo. He's sleepy. And that's Happy. Happy. Happy said, no thanks. Happy. Oh. Bo is soft. Okay, and then this is what today's behind the table looks like. Ooh. And this is the view as an artist working at the con, except imagine like a million people. Okay, so I'm going to return the camera to its cradle and I'm gonna switch the microphone mode. And I was not able to check the chat, obviously, through any of that. So hopefully the world did not set on fire while I was doing this. We'll find out. I have a feeling if the world really set on fire, just be like, no, don't! There's no sign. Ooh, wow, holy smokes! Lots of chat. Okay, um, if you guys are cool with that, I'm going to... Oh, thank you, Ashley! Um, sorry. <laughs> Multiple streams! Don't cross them, I guess. Um, I'm going to get caught up with the chat, if that's cool with you guys, um, and give some responses. And then I will see whether or not I'm going to do Sam's or Kabocha's commission or um, that whole pause the stream, pull up the reference thing. I might just do Sam's commission because like pausing the stream just doesn't seem like like super. And also, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something special for those of you who are watching on YouTube. I'm going to do a sketchbook flip through and chatter at you guys, which means you Ustream people not have to head on over to YouTube <laughs> to see what's going on, or you can just enjoy the chat. So I'm going to get caught up in the Ustream chat. Then I'm gonna go run upstairs and grab some sketchbooks for the YouTube chat. I hope that sounds good to you guys. So let's see, let's see. <laughs> Wait, which cover is really not a good fit for that book? Oh, you, you're talking about, okay. So I'm gonna actually show the YouTube people that. We're talking about Eat It Up. And um, none of the content, Eat It Up is about, um, so this is the cover. 
Eat It Up is about uh, food and enjoying food. And that was the pitch that the ladies' night people were looking for, and that's the pitch I gave them. And I usually do kid-friendly, kid-lit stuff, and most of the stuff in here is, oh, Cat of Cane's in here. Um, most of the stuff in here is like very age appropriate, very friendly. And um, yeah, I don't think I found anything but like one entry that was kind of, kind of uh, edgy. But then you have like, yeah, I don't even think this is that edgy. Um, then you have the cover, which while it's not revealing anything and it's not offensive offensive, I mean, she's got like a pizza thong and she's got, you know, egg pasties and I sell kid lit stuff at my table. So it was sort of like, well, I paid for these books. So they didn't even send me comp, they didn't even send me comp copies and I didn't get paid for my work with this book either. Um, I, so I saw no compensation and I had to pay for it and I helped promote it. And I emailed my editor and I was like, is there a variant cover? Because sometimes um, anthologies will do a variant if you hit a certain number. And I was just inquiring not to be like, you have to change the cover, but to let them know that if they had a variant to please order extra and I would buy them or I would Patreon tier it or whatever to get the, the variant covers rather than this. And she kind of went off on me about being like not sex positive, which it's like, well, I sell kid lit. Well, plenty of kid lit people sell stuff like this at their tables. And it's like, you know what? That might be true, but that doesn't work for me. I've never sold anything that was like racy at, actually at my table. I don't even, I don't, I mean, I will draw, you know, cute and fluffy stuff as commissions, but I won't even necessarily put it out at the front. I'll keep it behind the table or I'll fill it at home. I'm really careful about that kind of stuff and that's my choice. And I was just asking um, to see if there was a better option uh, or a different option, another option, not necessarily better. I mean, the art was really cute. I really liked the art they used for the cover. It just wasn't a good fit for what I had and I didn't get none of those, I did, well, it didn't seem like the artist got any say or the writers got any say in the art used on the cover. It was just like, this is what it's gonna be. So that kind of was not a great situation. And Heidi has joined us in the chat. Hey, Heidi. What am I using to color them? Wait, what am I? Aha, somebody knows their dinos. Thank you so much. Oh, awesome. So I have another commission that I'm gonna work on. Thank you so much. And Joseph is being super duper awesome. And Heidi is sharing fanime information in the chat. And Joseph is moderating. Thank you so much. The YouTube chat. So I am caught up on the chat. I'm going to have some water because I've been talking a whole lot. And then I'm going to work on Kabocha's commission. And then I'm going to work on Nintendo Switch's commission, which just came through. And thank you so much again. Oh, wait. I, I promised you guys a sketchbook flip through. I promised YouTube a sketchbook flip through. So I will actually get the water and then go get the sketchbooks. So hopefully that is cool with you guys. And I will chatter at you guys about fandom stuff or whatnot. Hopefully I didn't put all my sketchbooks away. So I'll be right back.
try to be organized. We'll see how that goes. Double check chat. Heidi's multitasking between the streams. So um, I recently switched sketchbooks. So I like to use the Blick Studio sketchbooks because they are cheap and they have decent paper and I can get the top spiral bound and I can get them in the size I like and they're cheaper than the yellow cover shop more sketch by like a dollar. Unfortunately, I don't have a Blick around here. So I order them like 10 at a time and Heidi sent me a bunch at one time. Thank you so much, by the way. Um, so these are like my two most recent sketchbooks. Um, and reason I don't necessarily show you guys, let me make sure this is, I can hold it up actually. So the reason I don't actually show you guys a whole lot um, of what I do in my sketchbooks, I do a lot of reference drawings, um, which um, some people like, like I like seeing that kind of stuff and some people don't care when Happy was wearing her daisy comb and was not happy about it. So um, I've done like a lot of like dress sketches and these are like Edwardian era dresses to uh, better understand fold and how the clothing is constructed and also sort of like the silhouette in capturing that quickly and gestur gesturally. I also have some like expression studies, although not too many in this and this one. And then I have a lot of referenced, uh, like, so because I want to do kidlet, I do a lot of um, drawings of kids. So I have a lot of that kind of stuff in here, just referenced drawings. And some of my older sketchbooks are just full of like really neat, let me make sure you guys cannot see anything. In some of my older sketchbooks, I have like lots of really neat doodles and stuff. Um, but I've been doing so many things with the intention of um, like doing them for YouTube. So I want to marker them or I want to color them that I haven't been sketching in my sketchbook as much. Oh, there's one of the covered, uh, the hand lettered title for Pickin' and Peelin'. And then here is the crawfish illustration. I think I actually went with this text because I could was able to get more of a um, dry brush effect. And I've also been trying to do more sketching directly in ink with less construction because I feel like my ability to draw direct something directly and quickly um, has kind of fallen apart and I kind of realized that at uh, ACAP 2016 because um, I was part of the quick draws and I was just like really really floundering because I couldn't do construction underneath it just wasn't time uh, appropriate let me move that down a level wow I never I don't think I ever did anything with this or I did and it never um I think I inked it on air for the ink drop launch so it's Kara coming up from a puddle of ink and then I use my finger to smudge some ink onto her clothes and then these are made with the fountain pen ink uh brush pens that I made Oh, I actually really like this one. I forgot. Let me show. I wish I could have the dual cam thing going on just one streaming channel. That would be super ideal sometime, next time. So I just like Googled wildflowers and did like a bunch of gestural sketches. And then back to micro fashion. And then these are some basic expressions that I did for a blog post I did on character expression. So just sort of, um, like I usually like to pull my expressions more when I'm doodling them. Um, these are kind of tame compared to like how much I like to pull mm -hmm. my expressions. And then trying for a more traditional kidlet style, something that might be 
more acceptable to publishers than what I currently do. And I probably could actually move my camera And then just using like a post-it note for a quick correction. And I've seen people actually use this as part of the design on like Instagram. And I really like that idea. That required, to me that's like a level of bravery I don't have. But I guess the more you practice something, uh, the better you're gonna get at it, the less it's gonna look terrible. More practicing with different kid lit styles. And I usually just draw Kara. Uh, since I don't have to think about the character design. And some ballet studies. There's an illustrators, does like a seasonal publication. And so um, I had just gotten a bunch of rejections from mm -hmm. various kid lit agencies. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a bunch of, re like, okay, so this was from reference, but I'm gonna do like style studies from reference. From reference so I was emulating a, a much more simple sort of style and basing that off of like a real person so um, sort of earlier in the stream I was doing a warm-up sketch and I talked about somebody who shared um, different like micro fashion photos of their kid uh, styling different outfits and I just really yeah no okay I thought you guys had like a view right into the litter box I was like great awesome Anyway, uh, I was just working through the photo set, drawing the kid in their different outfits in that more simple style. And it would probably be smart if I was posting that to like Instagram, but I'd quit posting that to Instagram. <laughs> um, and then like a Mother's Day doodle of Kara and her mom, of course. And then some more of those style studies and carpet in my sketchbook. How does that happen? And sometimes I'll abandon it like mid sketch if it's just not working for me. And then some of them are not, do not work in general. And then of course, lots of cat studies because what artist doesn't have lots of cat studies? And these are actually drawn in Emerald of Chavar and uh, Diamine Shimmering Seas that I'd put into a brush pen more fountain pen inks in brush pens because some of them shade really well so you get like a multi-tonal effect which is really cool and lots of lots of studies lots of dress studies in this one because I try to draw I mean I try to draw every day and I try to draw from reference every day and I try to start my day with a warm-up from reference to kind of loosen my hand up. That's why I did that warm up on air. Um, lots of puppers, a fluffer, a doggo, a catfish because I am unoriginal. Some hand studies where I was sort of simplifying the way I draw hands to something more cartoony. Um, there was something that came up. Oh, somebody had said on Twitter they had commented that in a story you never see, uh, or you don't often see a character's hair change, like change in length, like grow out as the story progresses, which would happen. And I was thinking, because Kara likes to keep her hair short, otherwise it gets in the way. Um, so of course I was like, well, what would that look like? Because Lilliputians don't have scissors or all scissors would be more like big head shears to them. So basically her mother cuts her hair with like a glass knife so sort of like how um, a hairstylist or a barber might use a straight edge razor to add layers to your hair. It's basically what her mom would have to do. And I used to do a lot more of those what if scenarios and uh, in the Ink Drop Cafe Discord, Kabocho will ask those sort of questions, those sort of cool world building questions. And I really should like draw them out more. Um, yes. I, I like that idea and we should we should do more drawing of that and then yoga poses directly in ink and then a super cute froggo 
Because I, so um, for Kidlet, one of the things they suggest to build your portfolio is to take a well-known poem and then uh, sort of illustrate it out as if it were a children's book. And Emily Dickinson's Nobody has always uh, spoken to me. When I was a kid and I spent all of my life at a babysitter, she'd read us poetry in the mornings and she'd have us memorize it and she had us memorize Nobody. And um, often when I'm posting to social media, <laughs> I feel like that frog croaking to an admiring bog because it's a comic artist talking to like very similar minded comic people. Um, but I really want to illustrate Nobody as a children's book dummy. And uh, I really wanted to go with like a really cute frog design for that. And I still will, I still will. And then this was a Father's Day sketch, um, which was done very last minute because I was doing something else for Father's Day. I think I was doing a show. Um, and my father has passed away, unfortunately. So um, sometimes I prefer to forget Father's Day until after Father's Day has happened because I don't have any surviving grandfathers and I'm not close to any of my uncles. So um, I guess I should probably call Joseph's dad on Father's Day and wish him a happy Father's Day, but it's a little painful for me. So uh, usually I will just kind of avoid Father's Day. Um, but I wanted to do a sketch of Kara and her dad because in the comic itself, their relationship is not super great. But um, when she was little, they were very, very close. He has trouble with his daughter growing up. And then um, here are some designs. I want to do a Honko stamp so that... Um, if that makes sense to you guys because I don't like my signature very much. So here are some potential Honko designs, mostly for Natto Soup because I don't like how my name Becca breaks down into that. And then we were talking about doing reading merit badge pins for Ink Drop, so that would be the design for Kara. But then I realized that like the really long comics, uh, you would have to do multiple badges. Because we were, we were brainstorming ways to encourage people to read everybody's comics on Ink Drop. And more micro fashion going with a really um, simplified style here. And just, so to me, it's important to do some drawing every day. So sometimes my drawings don't look so great, but that's okay. And then these, I was, um, I was commissioned to do um, a sketch of Jafar and Sinbad from, no, a painting of Jafar and Sinbad from uh, Magi, like Magi Labyrinth, something like that. Uh, or Labyrinth of Magic is the direct translation. Um, anyway, there was this fan art that was just really pretty and it really inspired me. And so here are some sketches based on that fan art. And then some more sketches. And that's that sketchbook which is a, de a dead sketchbook because it's finished. This is the live sketchbook because I'm still working on it. A friend of mine wants me to do the illustration for her wedding invitation. So we've been brainstorming that, working on that. And uh, she, for her bridesmaid's dress, she's thinking about having us all do wrap, wear wrap dresses in a certain color. So I was on the website and I was just sketching different ways it was wrapped. And then, oh, wow, it's like ink exploded on that. Micro fashion. And then, um, so when everybody was uh, re-rolling their sorting hat results, uh, Kabocha and I both got uh, Ravenclaw. So I had to draw us cutting up in potions. And this is gonna be a lot of those micro fashion sketches because I've been kind of in a weird headspace. So I haven't been thinking about my own work in a creative way. A whole lot lately so this was my going to anime expo announcement and one of my aunts thought it meant I was going to my cousin's wedding and it caused a little bit of family drama which was kind of frustrating because I was negotiating that while at the con which is never fun and loads and loads of micro fashion sketches and um, I don't know, I was just thinking about how cute it would be to draw like a little Kit Kara with her mom and her mom's like having her taste something that she'd made. And then I was like, well, this has them both, almost both of them from behind. 
also like what would the other side of the scene look like and which one would be cuter because like that's one of my problems is that when I'm doing illustrations I don't always think it all the way through and I don't always think about all the other shots I could take because I'm more of a writer than I am an artist so I don't necessarily think visually and then some more thumbnails for future projects more doodles oh and then there's like this meme going around on instagram where you draw yourself at various ages so i did 5 10 and 15. and then this was sort of a drawing prompt um from ink drop like what if your character met everybody else's characters and considering my character is like this tall i was like, well, that'll be a very uneventful meeting and that they won't even see her because she's so tiny and all she's doing is looking up at all of them. And then this was like one of the possible uh, at home con promos and more micro fashion. And then, um, so somebody shared these really great expression prompts where the expression is drawn on a sphere and it's facing in all sorts of different directions. So I've been doing some of them as my cool down, which is great because it's kind of forcing me to change the angle at which I will draw. So it's not straight on or it's not three quarter view, which is good because I don't do that enough and I could push it even more and I should push it even more. And then this is an in project. Actually, that should be going up. So more dress sketches, more micro fashion, more expressions. And then this morning's micro fashion, which did not go super well, but it went okay. It went well enough. So those are the sketchbooks. And then I have lots of like in progress art stuff. So I will show you guys that as well. So I'm working on, so I've never actually, I've used Stonehenge a lot when I was doing printmaking, but I've never used it for drawing or for painting. So I'm working on preparing an illustration to paint and ink on it. And then this is why I'm not just sketching Kabocha's commission directly, because this is my five by seven pad that I like to use for those types of commissions. And it's a cellulose, no, I'm sorry cut and rag paper so it's really nice paper but I have something already on it and it's a block so I don't want to just take this off and then you know what I mean I mean I could I've been I've been kind of like back and forth on the idea this morning and then I did that Mossery sketchbook review I ordered a Mossery based on Terry Delgado talking about it and she has a great YouTube channel and she does a lot of um, so she has this really cute anthro style which is sort of like naughty Disney afternoon um, which I really like her art um, and I follow her on Instagram as well and um, you could just look up Terry Delgado and you should be able to find her stuff um, I think she, her vlog series is called Terry talks anyway anyway she was like talking about ordering one and I am super susceptible when people are talking about like traditional art supplies I'm like oh I should try it so, so that's how that happened they took they take PayPal so at least I could pay for it with PayPal and I did like a bunch, oh my gosh, I forgot I did these. So I did um, colored inks plus fountain pen. Um, I started doing colored inks plus fountain pen compatibility tests. And then I've been swatching um, my brush pins in it to see how the paper took fountain pen ink. And then this was done with Artist Loft watercolor and look how much it shed. This is why when I talk about like quality watercolors, I'm always like not Artist Loft because that's really pot. And this was done with Soccer Koi and you can see that there wasn't nearly as much shedding and flaking as we got with that first one. Messing around with a graphite pencil. And then there was this image going around of um, these girls from the 1950s or maybe even the 1940s reading comics. And um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen that image, but that first little girl just like really resonated with me because like she's walking ahead of the crowd because it's like a little girl, a little boy sitting on a stoop, stoop probably doing nothing. I don't remember him doing anything. And then two little girls like arm in arm reading together. Um, and for some reason that first little girl reading comics, she just had like this really like, 
how do I put, I loved her expression. She's like really intent and really self-satisfied and like lost in the world of comics. Um, and I really like that. So I wanted to draw her and I did it in the graphite pencil because I was messing around with the graphite pencil. Did I, is that, no. And this is probably gonna get colored in alcohol marker. And then this was drawn on Usagi's birthday and uh, colored way after. Like I wanted to color it at AX and I just never really found the time to do it. Um, and I think I did it, I think I recorded this and it hasn't gone live yet. But I really like how this turned out. It doesn't really look like my art, but like it doesn't look like my art in a good way. Cause it, I don't know, just to see me it doesn't look like my art. And then I also will swatch New watercolor acquisitions. Oh, and this is the Soho Ultramarine and they're, no, is it Ultramarine? No, it's like, no, I think it is, it's like French Ultramarine. It's terrible. But this is like Soho Blue Violet, which is gorgeous. It's so, it's so intense blue. It is gorgeous. And I'm always looking for like a good blue violet. And that is that for the Mossery. And then I have like some sketches that I inked with various fountain pens in different ink colors. Um, I guess I just grabbed this one. And then I have some sketches that I inked with acrylic inks. And I kind of hope to have them ready for this, but I did not because I'm a bad person. No, I'm not actually. But I will finish them. And then I have a unicorn girl. And then, really? I grabbed the wrong one. I have, this is like this is a um, pentallic field book and it's cheaper than the Strathmore uh, watercolor field books and it's not bad it's not a bad performer for doodles and stuff so there's not really much in here but I, I go through these sort of sketchbooks pretty quickly and that's kind of like all the stuff I'm currently working on oh no wait a couple more Running out of behind the table space. Uh, just like this was, this is old. This is that Oni girl I did, or Oni child really. I did um, to demonstrate using the uh, Kuratake Zig and blending with them. And this didn't turn out as well as Usagi did. And then there is a Hawaiian girl um, that I did to test out um, the Prima Marketing Watercolor Confections in Tropical. And I recorded this. Um, I think this is live, or it's it's been edited, but um, the field test where I swatch all of the uh, paints is not. Okay, so we've got that down. Wait, oh no, it's not, Heidi, it's not You're the Golden Pig. It's, um, if you're talking about those bright oranges, it's either Apache Sunset or Habanero. Uh, I like Apache Sunset a little bit better because it's got a wider range of shade, but Habanero is like very, it's a punchy color, like it's in your face. I mean, you would know that, but um, so a lot of those fountain pen inks, especially the Noodler's one, uh, the shading inks look really cool in brush pens, especially if you can get a brush pen that is juicy but won't link. So I've tried putting them in the Pentel Pocket Brush and I find that it's too dry. So you want one of the ones that you can kind of squeeze. So a Kuratake or a Niji water brush would probably be ideal because those are pretty good and they don't leak. Oh, hey Jizki, or, or Jess, right? I'm sorry, I'm super happy that you stopped by. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, this is, this so far this has been really fun. Um, I'm just happy that people are, are hanging out and chatting um, because I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go. And I thought that by starting the stream at noon, that might not be the smartest. Like as after I, like this morning, because I was running late, I was like, oh, maybe I done goofed. But I think it was fine. So I'm going to do kabochas and then I'm gonna do Nintendo Switch but I'm gonna go get some water and sort of prep my work area so I am not gonna be able to check 
the chat and I apologize for that. Um, hopefully if a emergency happens, uh, Joseph will let me know because I'm going to be pulling up reference. And I was requested not to give any, not to name any names because this is a character who has not been introduced yet. So I'm not going to give any names. But um, if you guys are not reading Kabocha's Link, y'all really should be, especially if you like like magic, magic plus family drama, which is I don't, I like it. Like I don't know when it comes to fantasy stuff, I am kind of I'm kind of weird. Because um, I don't dislike fantasy, but I really like the minutia of fantasy. <laughs> so, like, Spider Silk is another good comic for that, where um, you, you just see how, like, there's a lot of daily life and how magic affects daily life. I really like that. Ugh. All right. So, I will still continue to natter at both streams, but if you are looking for action, you should head on over to the YouTube stream, um, because I'm going to be working on Kabocha's commission. And what I'm going to do, hmm, 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 now I could do... I could do a graphite transfer technique, um, which is where I would draw it in blue lines and then cut it out and then put graphite on the back and then transfer it to my paper. Or I can, I don't really like, I don't necessarily like that idea. Um, I can do that thing I talked about earlier where I, um, where I, I will pencil it and then scan it and then print it onto say arches um except then i have to and then i can ink it on the stream and then that's the last i can work on that commission on the stream because um, i need to let the ink cure so uh since it is a commission for someone who is in the stream uh sam sam or kabocha i'm so sorry <laughs> kabocha what do you, which would you prefer would you prefer i do um Except then I don't have like the paper I want to use. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. Do you, would you prefer your commission to have an inked outline, or would you prefer that I um, I do it like I did the WCC piece for this week, where it's uh, tighter and there isn't an inked outline. <laughs> I mean, I could, I could, okay, graphite, tra gra wait, ah, all right, if you want it. I could still do it, it's just, yes, I can still do it. I just have to dig up my, I may have to disappear for like, uh, 10 to 20 minutes while I dig up graphite. Hey, uh, I'm going to Discord you, actually, to ask a question about this character.
Uh, I can dig it up. And I apologize if I get kind of quiet because uh, sometimes it's a little hard for me. Oh, yeah, no, whatever, whatever is, uh, to whatever is, um, fine. Um, I can do it either way. If I didn't, if I didn't have you in chat to easily, easily reach, I would probably do what I did with the WCC piece. Since that, in, in terms of like, so, uh, no graphite pencil outlines and then paint it and then just paint it with like an extra layer of, um, detail, if that makes sense. Because with the ink, sometimes, uh, the ink, the ink does a lot of the work, so you can kind of like fudge and not be as tight with the details if you want to. Um, but I think it would look prettier if I didn't do that. And let me make sure I am super impressed by my phone is holding up so much better with YouTube than it was with Ustream. It was like really not having it. So sadly, this is also, well, sadly, this is also me at a lot of cons where uh, once I start working on commissions, I don't get to talk as much, right? I choose not to. It's not, I have uh, trouble juggling both, so. So unfortunately, I... I know that watching somebody draw is probably, especially from the Ustream angle, is probably less entertaining. If you don't mind. I mean, you probably can't get it like on top of me close mm -hmm. without moving the thing, but. Also, with the tree, it's not all the amount of tiny bits, not as much as it is.
Oh, it's plugged in too. Okay. So that's something to be aware of. Because that hour long stream I did last night like ate the battery, which isn't surprising. Do I have anything I can use as like a drop cloth? I guess I can use that craft mat that I have on the table if I get to painting this today. I'm not sure what you mean. Well, I don't want to paint directly on this tablecloth because I am sloppy when oh. I paint. Yeah. Or just paper. Use print. I guess that is true. zoom in? Nope. That would have been too much to ask. That would have been great. I meant on YouTube while streaming. I didn't think so. So I think what I might do, if it's okay with you guys, is I'm going to finish this sketch and then I'm going to, because uh, Nintendo Switch ordered a graphite commission, I'm going to switch over to that. Uh, and then after that's finished, I will return to this. If that is cool with y'all. mostly because uh, doing a graphite transfer is a little tedious on the hand and uh, so I want to get the other commission taken care of before I do that. I'm, I'm not complaining, I'm just trying to think like what is, what is fairest for everyone. Also, graphite commission is not, I mean a graphite transfer, the process itself is not always very interesting to watch. So. Uh, But it will be good for those of you who are interested in learning that process because it often starts off looking really just like not very good, but uh, then you can kind of clean it up and work with it. You'll see, you guys will see. It'll also leave a fainter paint pencil line. Um, maybe I should check and see if I have a five by seven fluid pad, fluid 100 pad. What I was gonna do is I was gonna actually transfer this over 
not to a block, um, but rather to a like a sheet of arches, which I have not done in a while, done it like that in a while. I usually print on it, but it's no, it's going to be no harder or no more difficult than printing uh, blue lines. Okay, all right, so. Let me switch the view. This is what we've got so far. And I am going to check the chats. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you, Heidi. And thank you so much for swinging by. Bum, bum. Okay, so I am going to go get my um, <sighs> words, my cardstock, and also um, like a, a hard surface for that. And I'm also going to look at what watercolor papers I have while I'm up there. So I will be back really soon. And I'll probably also take a bathroom break. I wish my cat's not sleepy. When he would get up, he'd have to sit in my chair and do my work for me. He said, no, I'm good. Anyway, we gotta do those things. Take a little break and I'll be right back.
Hey guys, sorry about that. I return with watercolor paper and cardstock and honey lemon tea because I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit. And thank you guys so much for waiting for me, although I might have to go run and grab a pencil sharpener. I can definitely do Nintendo Switch commission. ice cream. All right. And Joseph was super kind and sent me some reference. I'm going to pull up some more because you can never have too much reference, right? Is this a webcomic? That's awesome! Are you kidding? That is so cool! That would explain why we weren't finding a turnaround. That is awesome! Thank you! Thank you for introducing me to a new comic. And I will grab the link and put it in the uh, Ustream chat because that's the chat I have easy access to. That way other people can enjoy it as well. Okay, so am I lined up? I am lined up. Alrighty. Normally, I don't draw the head first. I usually do the torso first and it kind of lets me place everything um, a little better. So cute, holy smokes. I should probably go big with the ice cream cone, right? Since I normally draw big hands, so draw a big ice cream cone. I had more of a sneeze than that. And I will be mailing this out to you, Nintendo Switch, after the stream is finished and same goes for well not quite the same goes for you I'm in uh, Kabocha I'm gonna work on your commission as much as I possibly can um, and I will go that's why I was asking if I had anything I could put down to protect my tablecloth uh, just to make sure I don't get paint all over it because this is not an easily washed cloth and I'm sure I do even even like some 
newsprint, like Joseph said, would be better than nothing. Oh man, should she have two ice creams? Should it be like, I, I asked this, but I can't check the chat. But um, should I, I should probably have like two ice creams, right? Go big or go home? So like a popsicle maybe in the other? Yeah, I mean, is that all about that life? And give me something productive to do with that other arm. Let me fix that. Also, like, uh, Star Punch Girl looks really, uh, when I say shonen -y, I don't mean it's for boys. I mean, like, the shonen genre. Uh, and I was just talking to Joseph last night about how pumped up I get watch <laughs> watching and reading shonen stuff and how I've kind of fallen off the, like, shonen bandwagon a bit. So... seems like a perfect new addition to maybe binge. So for those of you who read web comics on your phones, um, what, are, what are you using? Are you using Tapas? Are you using Webtoons? Are you using something else? Um, this topic comes up a lot. I don't read web comics on my phone, um, but I think I would read comics more often if I read them on my phone. And I could just like put together an RSS feed of everything, but then I have to have been caught up. I feel like I have to have been caught up with the comic to do that for it to work really well for me. So there's like a whole archive problem. So I either need to like dedicate a couple of days and just binge read. Just checking. Oh no! Oh no! I'm working. <laughs> All right, so that means I, so I have reference up. I'm not looking at either chat, just to be uh, fair. Uh, <laughs> so if an emergency happens, uh, t text me. <laughs> I don't know, Discord me, there we go. If an emergency happens, one of you should Discord me, please. But otherwise, I think we're good. Seriously though, I really, this is like, this is like so my, my wheelhouse because it's like cute girl doing a cute thing. Oh, all my favorites. I want to draw those knee guards really big because that will be cute. So they go in a little bit. That makes sense. So to help with drawing the knee guard in perspective here, I did a crosshair, I did a circle, and then I did a crosshair of the circle. I'm drawing an octagon, and then I'm gonna uh, basically carve my shapes out, and hopefully I can do that properly. Something like that. And then, oh, they're like Kogal socks. Cute. 
That is not even a phrase I have used in a decade. But I used to be, uh, I used to be a huge fan of like um, that the Kogal fashion of um, having like these mega long socks that are like scrunched up so they look like leg warmers. And I used to draw, I used to draw that a lot. I I still think it's really cute. I just haven't seen that in a minute. I mean, I used to own several pairs of them as well. They're very comfortable in the winter, to be honest. Okay, and then three holes like a bowling ball. And, and she's wearing a skirt with shorts underneath, which like I was literally just talking the other night about how I love that. I do that myself and how I wish more comic people would do that because there are lots of girls who enjoy wearing skirts or dresses, but they don't want to like flash their butts. So I'm a big, I'm a big fan of like shorts under skirts. Although, in this pose, I don't think you're going to see them, but I, I approve. Maybe I can, since I talked about it, since I talked it up so much, I can just draw a little, little bit of the short. Yeah, I wish, I wish more common people would take that approach. Especially when your characters are underage, and it's, you know, it doesn't really behoove you to draw something scandalous. Not that that, that, you know what I mean. Yes. Oh, like she has a bandaid on her nose. Are you kidding? Cute. Of course, have to draw the ice cream on the face. If I can find man this is really cute I am excited to link this to you guys y'all are gonna like it And then drawing the form of the hair and I will so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm gonna have to go get some ice for my tea. I should probably stir it as well. So I don't know about y'all. Make some assumptions here and uh, assume that you guys are drawing or painting or working on stuff too, which is super cool because when I watch other people stream, it always makes me want to work. Um, or the only time I have is when I'm painting. You know what I mean. So what are you guys working on? Um, if you're comfortable doing it, link it in the chat. I prefer the Ustream chat because that's the one I can check. Um, but... I will probably go through the YouTube chat log, or I know Joseph will um, when he gets it back, but I, yes, it would be easier for me if it was in the Ustream chat. 
just because that's the log I have access to because I'm streaming from my phone and um, I could bring the YouTube thing up on the computer but I'm I don't know I guess I'm just concerned that it's gonna cause some major lag issues since I'm checking on my Surface Pro and something Joseph brought up was that um, if I do another at-home con um, it would be really helpful if I had um, my chat up on there's a computer monitor off camera if I had the chat up there and then I could see what people are saying and that's probably what a lot of people who do traditional art streams do is they probably are working at their computer technically so they can just look up How did your hair work? Oh my gosh, and it also seems like there's a lot of different styles for this, which uh, I assume the creator has commissioned or people have done fan art for the character, which I love, like, I, I'm biased, I do that for Kara, because I love seeing how other people interpret her. So I'm just like, oh, this is great. I am just checking the reference. I guess I don't need to, <laughs> I guess I don't need to explain it to you guys, sorry. Okay, and then she's also got this really cute messenger bag. Actually, it looks like the Band-Aid nose is not canon, so I'll fix that. It's really cute, though. And then, uh, now that this is almost sketched in, I'm gonna check the chat, reply, well, I'm gonna check the Ustream chat because that's the one I have easy access to, like I said. Um, and Joseph will hopefully let me know when he gets back what, uh, what transpired in the YouTube chat. And then I will pencil this, and then I will get back to work on Kabocha's commission. cute 
All right, so I will, boop, boop. So, and then I'm gonna come around, I'm gonna show you guys as well. So I'm gonna pencil over this and I'm gonna use a soft graphite because um, it goes over the non-photo blue lead a lot better. So, uh, 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 I definitely make weird noises to myself all the time when I'm drawing. I guess I do it on YouTube as well. I am that person. And I did grab a graphite pencil to do a graphite transfer, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. Let me get caught up on the chat. typing uh oh hey nisa um so so kabocha said that splatoon 2 is what she's working on and this, i'm gonna go grab a spoon for this but i'll keep talking um so like i knew splatoon 2 was coming out but i didn't realize it was gonna be the same weekend and then there was like what a splat fest last night um like what was it ketchup versus mayo something like that um and I was just like, oh, you know what I mean? Um, I would like to play it. We have, I have a switch. Um, oh man, that's gonna help. It's uh, honey and lemon tea. I'm gonna put it over here and I'm actually going to turn on some of the lights that I have on my display since it's not so sunny anymore and maybe that will help so Splatoon 2 yeah that's hard to that's hard to compete with wow, I must have left this on all night this little one so I'm turning on these little LED lights that I attached to my grid just using the buckyball so they're vaguely magnetic and you twist them to turn them on. And I may have to go grab some more lights. Let me know in the chat. Um, unfortunately, this is, at, this is aimed at the Ustream people. So um, if you have just tuned in on the YouTube chat, um, I am kind of dual streaming. So, cause I can't figure out how to get them all at the same place. Um, I have a, uh, I have like the front of the table view over at Ustream dot tv slash channels slash becca's becca hyphen s hyphen commissions um and for those of you who are watching on ustream i have a stream of the commissions i'm working on going on at my youtube channel which is youtube.com slash meadow soup uh oh splatfest hasn't happened i saw people talking about it um somebody was like pointing out that like ketchup versus mustard would have gotten would get a better response because a lot of people don't care for mayo. All right, so I am vaguely refreshed. And so when I, I have often on had a flirtation with these sort of um, clipboards that you can keep your supplies in. And this is one from Amazon. And I actually don't like this one at all. This was like the cheapest one they had. Um, I used to get them at Walmart. Um, Rubbermaid makes some pretty good ones. This one is crummy and it's got like a divot, like right in the middle of your drying surface. So stay away from Saunders. Um, but the Rubbermaid ones are really good and don't have a divot in the middle. Anyway, these are usually used by like people who work in the field so they can put like their papers and stuff in here to protect it from the elements. And they work in general really well for at con commissions because you have your paper in here. I also keep my protectors in here. I keep spare leads in here. Sometimes I'll put my pencils in here. Um, and I keep my paper in there as well. 
so it's all in one place is super handy. Oh, and I should say this for any of my mm -hmm. friends who are are you even streaming? Oh, okay. I think it is streaming. I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought, um, because, uh, whatever, the screen had gone black, so it seemed like it had quit streaming, but I guess it shut off to help conserve battery. Also, going back to a way old topic, having, uh, if, if you're doing, if one is doing a group stream or everyone's doing commissions, having one person uh, take the orders would be super helpful. And that could even just be something that shifts on an hourly basis, depending on how long the stream go, goes on, of course. else that maybe would be helpful I don't know how feasible this is is having like text to type enabled or you know the reverse so uh, yeah text to talk um, and wearing a headset and having your chat read to you by Microsoft Sam I don't know if people utilize that or what phone is going to have me paranoid because it gets too hot and then it stops recording and it doesn't beep or let me know or anything like that, which would be handy. Oh, and um, if on either stream, if anyone watching, because I know a few of you do streams, like I know Terry does streams really pretty frequently with the Terry talks and uh, with like the quiet streaming. So I am interested in learning about, say, chat management. And I appreciate all of you guys who have come out. This is, usually my streams are like me, uh, which is why I quit doing it. Um, so I really appreciate the company because I was a little concerned that I would be streaming to myself and it was like, well, I made a big deal about doing this thing, so now I got to do it. Yeah, you know, you like when, you know, when you, you fix something and you end up fixing it worse.
wonder if some of like the really popular game streamers actually have somebody reading the chat to them in their headset. Sorry, if me musing about this is like, I, I don't know, like that sort of, that sort of like, uh, audience, crowd, engagement, and management is really interesting to me and really, I think it's really cool how people solve those problems because most of the people solving these problems are not like professionals, so um, they're finding unique solutions. Or maybe some people it just doesn't like, you know, doesn't, they, they just make it clear that they're not gonna be able to directly engage the chat and that the chat's welcome to chat amongst themselves because I've seen some gamers who do that. I'm gonna have to make another honey tea. And all is quiet on the Discord front, so I think I think we are not having any emergencies, which is always always a good thing. No trash can fires, please. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more like the big group mega hangout stream sounds like a lot of fun. Because I think a lot of us uh, watch streams when we're drawing and we also sh stream when we're drawing or record or, you know, I mean, take photos. Like, I feel like for a lot of people, not everyone, of course, but for a lot of people, there's like this desire to uh, engage and communicate with other people while because this is a very can be a very lonely isolating thing to do and like streaming and recording and uh, doing tutorials and blog posts it's all a way to bring other people in um, and to like share your world with somebody else and I, I'm probably like not saying anything groundbreaking or, that's okay, right? We're just chatting. And I, I, there's all sorts of ways to do that. Um, and I think they're all very valid ways of doing it. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, I've flirted with streaming many times over the years and I always, it was always one of those things that like, see, this is working for me. I don't know if this is working for you guys. It probably isn't ideal. Like if we could get both these cameras on one stream, that would be, hello, Bowie. Do you want to be on camera? Okay. Say hi to YouTubes and say hi to you stream. And if you're going to sit on my lap, you gotta be chill. You gotta be chill. Sorry. Gotta be chill, okay? Lay down. Come on, dude. Thank you. Oh yeah, that's my boy. I think uh, the YouTube people can probably see him better than the Ustream people. Sorry, Ustream people. I know a lot of y'all are cat folk. Anyway, like, like I've streamed before and like, I usually end up boxing myself into like a weird corner. So I'll stream at like the kitchen table, which I never draw at. Um, it's so weird to me that setting up like a fake convention table suddenly makes me like 100% more comfortable with streaming. Or I'll stream at my desktop, which really isn't big enough to stream. Or like, I don't know, it's just always kind of like an awkward situation for me. Streaming, but this is actually more comfortable? <laughs> I know, right? Like, I'm sitting at this contrived artist alley table. 
without any ability to see the chat at this current point in time, and yet I'm much more comfortable streaming this way than I normally. That's weird. You have to put me in like the artist alley contacts and suddenly I am comfortable with chatting and comfortable drawing at the same time because that's what I do at cons is I'm doing commissions and chatting. And I usually am not super good at talking while I'm conceiving the sketch. Um, but like if I'm penciling or inking, I can talk a lot more. Conceiving, conceiving a sketch. I let out a loud scream. It is because my cat is shifting on my lap and it means he's dug his claws into my thigh as he falls, which happens pretty frequently. Come on, dude. Yes. Are you going to bite me? So when I'm drawing, he likes to do this like lick, lick, nip thing on my <laughs> underarm and he thinks he's real cute and it hurts hurts. Not cute at all. Okay. This also, also this like, in a way this kind of works out better than a real con does because um, I can get through my commissions a lot faster because I'm not like, let me stop and make a sale. Let me stop and make a sale. So I'm going to get up. Oh, yeah, y'all hear that, huh? I will check the chat. Oh, I should just talk to the camera. Thank you so much for stopping by, Leanna, and hanging out and chatting, and you were super good company, and the cat's trying to expose me on camera now, which is weird. And before you go... I'm going to try to pick him up. He doesn't like that. So you can see him one more time. And I'm going to de-cat hair myself. And I'm going to bag Nintendo Switch's commission. And then I'm going to get back to work on kabochas, unless I have any other uh, sketch or uh, detailed chibi ink commissions to work on. And then I'll probably do those Unless Kabocha is like, no, I want the graphite right now. I have places to be. You know, sorry, drop my blue lead. You know, try to be flexible with this because this is the first time. We're learning things today. I'm learning things today for sure. And the cat's going to play with my blue lead. I wish that was on camera because it is really cute. Um, he, he and Happy both play with my art play a lot, which is cute. And when I try to get it on camera, they won't do it anymore. So... Oh, wait, is, there, is the Switch friend code on um, the DS? I, I never connected the two. I mean, I can, but I never did. I wish you could use the DS, the 3DS, as like another, a third, a tertiary controller. Maybe you can. Maybe I just don't know anything. Yeah. So we're gonna switch over. Oh, I need scissors. Um, okay. So I'll do a little bit of talking and then I'll take a little bit of a break. So I'm going to do the graphite transfer for Kabocha's um commission. There we go. Too many, too many cut sounds. Having our time with that. Gonna get a couple things organized first but then i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to do another tour of the table if y'all are cool on for the stream for Ustream, sorry another tour of the table for Ustream, since Ustream does not necessarily have the most interesting view 
Um, and I have some potential watercolor paper candidates and I still haven't really decided. I have a block of Arches Rough. Problem with this is for drawing at this size with that level of detail at that size, this paper is too rough to really take um, the graphite well. So this is probably not gonna happen. Then I have a pad of Lockwell Canson Heritage. And this is also, so all of these papers that I grabbed are cotton rag papers. Um, so this I would have to stretch in order to continue the piece. And then I have a big block of cold press arches, which means I, yeah, I could like split the page, but it's already pre-stretched. So, <coughs> sorry. Yes, I am going to remove this. I'm gonna do a table tour and then I'm gonna go upstairs and grab scissors and, I, and tape, scissors and tape, scissors and tape. Do not forget I need to grab scissors and tape. Not kibbles and bits, scissors and tape. And maybe I'll make myself some more tea. Ustream, is there anything in particular you want me to demonstrate for you guys or uh, flip through? I will give you guys like a minute and you can let me know after that. I'm going to eat something.
guys for being patient with me. Let's make sure everything is working. Oh, wow. Looks like my stream lagged out. Super cool. All right. So, I am about to begin the wire, uh, the graphite transfer. I'm going to 